This is a regular meeting, Town of North Wilkesboro Board of Commissioners is now in session. Please rise. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, help us to always do your will and do what's best for the citizens of North Wilkesboro. Please lead, guide, and direct us. We ask this in Jesus, your son's name. Amen. Please Amen. face the flag. Chief Thornburg, would you please lead us in the pledge? Please be seated. Section four, additions and deletions to the agenda. Uh, Ms. Detch, I believe you do have an addition. Yes, we need to add item D1 as a town street closure. And this is for a town sponsored event on 10th Street Friday from 3 to 10 p.m. Okay. D1. Okay. Um, did everyone get a chance to read through that? It's pretty much boilerplate. John Roselli is asking uh, for a uh, closure uh, for a few hours on that day. It's an Italian festival. Maybe it's a uh, block up. <clears throat> so if there's um, going to routine business, we can uh, pass all these, accept them all in one motion. I uh, would need a, a motion, please. Uh, I'm all right, so uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe we need approval of the agenda first. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the agenda with the change that was stated. But I have one clarification your D1 is under the routine business or uh, prior to the public hearing. It'll be as part of your consent agenda. So the right, thank you. I wanted to make that clarification. Yes, sir. I make a motion that we accept the uh, agenda as stated with the change of D1 to the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? I'm sorry, second, please. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Palm. All right. <clears throat> All those in favor? Do I need to read the Do I need to roll call this? I believe so, Mark. Okay, uh, Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. A? Mr. Yes. Hall? Uh, Mr. Church? Uh, uh, Okay, motion carried. <clears throat> do I need that? Do I need that? Includes approval of the agenda. Is that correct? And the addition, both. We need to go through this again. Mr. Mayor, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, next section will be the general public comment period. Ms. Dutch, would anybody sign up? I've got Peter Bergen for the budget hearing, so not under. That'll be at the public hearing. Okay, all right, let me make a note. Okay, that'll bring us to um, section eight, uh, town manager's uh, report. Uh, Mrs. Detch, you had some comments, please. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, we need to do the, I mean, we need a motion for the uh, consent or the routine business. So that's why I had asked her. I make okay. a motion that we accept the uh, uh, routine business as stated. Second. Uh, second. Uh, Mr. Palmer? Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Day? Yes. Mr. Paul? Uh, Mr. Church? Yes. Motion carries. Now, Section 8. Uh, Ms. Dutch, you have some comments, please. Yes, there are just a few updates for the board. Uh, we will have a controlled burn this Saturday starting at 7 a.m. at 211 Sparta Road at uh, the Blair property. I think she discussed it with us at the last meeting. Um, we received word that we are, we are going to be getting a grant from DEQ for $50,000 for a feasibility study. And once we get more information, I'll bring it to you all. Um, okay. And then the last thing is, uh, hopefully either today or tomorrow, we will be having a water pump working at our waste or water treatment plant. 
and we will still have to be renting one as a backup until we get the parts for the secondary pump. So we're making we're making it happen. So that's some good news. Yeah. Then grant from DQ for the maintenance. No, this is different. This is a uh, feasibility study, and I've got to get caught up to speed on it. It's water merger regionalization feasibility study. So we'll find out more and bring it to you, but that's, that's good news. Uh, that's all I had, Dan. Uh, uh, I, I do not have room for Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Dash, please? Anyone? <clears throat> Okay, then uh, public hearing uh, for fiscal year 2022-2023 general fund and water sewer fund budget is now open. And um, Ms. Statt, you had a Peter. Asking, yeah, he, he's yeah. welcome to come forward and speak, please. Say no, everybody. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Hey y'all, my name is Peter Burke. I know I've chatted with the mayor a few times, uh, said hello to some of you in passing, a candidate for him and such over the last year. I moved here about two years ago, uh, live off 268, and uh, I've read, read some of the comments on the proposed budget. Uh, just wanted to offer a little bit of perspective. Um, I know, uh, I've again, I've lived in town, well, in town for about a year and a half now. Uh, glad to be a resident in North Wilkesboro. It's a beautiful part of the country. I'm from Michigan originally. And uh, there are two things that I tell people uh, when they ask what it's like living in North Wilkesboro. I tell people trash is only $10 a month, and that's awesome. And if I have extra stuff, the town will bring a truck. <laughs> and uh, for me, honestly, those are the two benefits uh, that I have living in the town of North Wilkesboro. Uh, there, there are really no other town services that I necessarily use, uh, have reason to use other than driving on the roads that same roads I'd probably drive on if I lived my lap and uh, didn't pay the extra taxes. <laughs> um, but I just want to bring the perspective you all were elected uh, to serve the town and put the best, best interests of the town first. Uh, but I just want to ask you all to think back uh, to prior to your service on the board as a town resident. Uh, if you were to go and to read in the paper uh, about the proposed fee changes, and I know many of them are modest. Uh, many of these are not outrageous uh, doubling, tripling things and things like that. There's arguments that well, we should line up with the town, we should line up with Wilkesboro, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but as a resident reading those in the paper, uh, with everything else that's going on right now with gas prices going up, which obviously affects the town and its staffing and management as well, um, it's, it's another cost. Uh, and it might only be $2 a month. Uh, for garbage, and then you know the uh, the two percent increase I think it was for water and and various other things. Um, but I can also tell you that as a Wilkes County resident, it made me pretty happy uh, to read down the list of fee changes and fee hikes uh, that the Wilkes County Commissioner said no to, uh, and that was just a little bit of encouraging. You know what, those folks. I feel like they have my best interest at heart in that. And so again, you guys have a budget, uh, you have town staff to think about and uh, cost of living for them and costs of doing business as the town. Um, and so you're not just thinking about this as residents and I certainly understand that, uh, but in representing the town, you are representing the residents. And so I just ask you to keep that in mind as you consider this uh, and I would love to be able to tell people even after this budget approved is approved that my trash is only ten dollars. So thank y'all very much. Thanks for coming. Appreciate thank you very you. much. <clears throat> Anyone else, Ms. Dutch? Um, let's see. Not signed up, no sir. Okay. Anything uh, from the board? 
Okay. We'll continue then. Uh, consideration of old business, the Smoot Park Master Plan. Mrs. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, we need we 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 need to close the. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I do. Thank you, boy. We take, need to have it on the budget, please. You, did you need to close? I'm sorry. I you, I missed uh, that last part. Please repeat. Uh, we need to close the uh, the uh, public session, and then we need to call for a vote to uh, pass the budget. Thank you. The public hearing regarding the general fund and water sewage fund budget is now closed. And I'll uh, need a motion, please, to pass the budget. Uh, Danny needs to say something. We have to do it a little bit different this time. Yeah, yeah, we, we okay. have, a, we, as we discussed at the last meeting, we have a new requirement uh, courtesy of uh, Senate Bill 473 that we need to consider uh, the nonprofit requests that are in the budget separately from the general budget. I think we can take a vote on the general budget, but then we need to address the nonprofit charitable requests separately because I believe some of the board members are also board members for these various organizations. Uh, and I'll, I'll remind everybody before we get into that part, it's not that you're associated with or a volunteer with a nonprofit, you're either a director, an officer, or a governing board member. That's the only requirement for a board member here to receive uh, himself or herself from the vote on the appropriations for the nonprofits. I think what I would suggest is we entertain a motion to approve the budget uh, and then separately a motion to entertain the appropriations that are made to the nonprofit. <clears throat> I have a question or two about the fee schedule if you don't um, normally uh, vote on the fee schedule the same time you do the budget but I just need to clarify you know we talked about the out of town rates um, on the fee schedule here it's I think one and a half percent but the outside city limit rates on the note it says four times the normal rate I wasn't sure um uh, if we came to an exact uh, agreement, what you want to. Um... <coughs> Connie, I believe we called, I think we were just doing the four time across the board for outside, all the rates. Outside the city. And then, because uh, I think we also called for the public hearing on that uh, for the June 30th meeting. So, but I, I think we just decided that the in town rate, and then anything that is out of town was this the four time rate, four times the in town rate, right? Just okay. across the board. Well, I do have that note on here, but the actual figures on the on the uh, fee uh, schedule is not accurate for four times, so I will update those right before we publish the. There were a couple budget. of discrepancies in that chart last time we had the meeting, yeah. So I will correct those. I just want to make sure four times was the correct one. That's how I remember it was four times. Okay, <clears throat> okay so we'll entertain a motion for acceptance of the budget, except for the nonprofit with the press. <coughs> Can I have a motion, please. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the general fund and city water fund budgets for the upcoming fiscal year, excluding the allocation for the nonprofits. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Got a second, please. Uh, uh. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Palmer. Yes. All those in favor, Mr. Palmer. I, I can't see, I have to, hear, have to shout out. Yes. Okay, um, Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Day? Yes. Mr. Hall? Uh, Mr. Church? Okay, Mr. Yes. Church? Thank you. <clears throat> Motion carries. Hey, Danny, I want to do this. Yes, I'll be glad. Okay. Uh, do we have to go to a nonprofit request? Okay, um, so I guess we'll have to do a. a, a Take, we just can take a vote on all these. I believe there's about 12. So the first one is uh, Wilkes ADAP. 
Okay, and uh, Mr. There are eggs. Okay, okay, okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Hall. And we need to do these as each separate entities. I think we have to. Yeah. That's my it was, yeah. I'm sorry, folks. This will take a while. But uh, Mr. Parsons? I beg your pardon? I say, we're, I guess we're going to go ahead and vote on these. We have to take a vote on each one think, separate. I think Danny said we need to do these individually. So I'll make a motion Correct. to accept the budget request for Wilkes ADAP. Do we need a motion for each one? Or can we just? Vote on each one. If we have to have a motion for each one to give board members the opportunity, if they have to, to recuse themselves. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Mr. Parsons, I have a. Thank you. Have a second, please. Mr. Palmer, Mr. Palmer, a second. Did I? Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Then all those in favor, Palmer, Mr. Parsons. Yes. Miss Day? Yes. And Mr. And Mr. Church? Yes. Mr. Church? Okay, yes. motion carries. The, uh, um, okay. I think it is for the Wilkes Art Gallery, so I'm going to go and um, get Mr. Mr. Hall. I'm going to vote for the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Is Mr. Hall on that board too? Please come. Please come. Okay. Maybe to expedite this situation, can we just find out because it's like Andrew said that he's on the Wilkes Art Gallery Board and the EDC Board. Uh, I'm on none of these boards. Uh, Angela, are you on any of these boards? No, I'm not. Uh, Bert, do you have any other boards that you're on in this one? I'm on the uh, top. 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 All right, so let me ask you a question. Since there's only a conflict of commissioner between the gallery, EDC, and the Wilkes community, College. Can I make a single motion for these other ones so that we can expedite this process? Yes, I think we can make a separate motion for the two boards that Mr. The Commissioner Palmer's involved in, approve those, and have him come back in, um, approve the rest of Commissioner Hall and recuse himself to the community college as we did with last. All right, so what I want to do is just go ahead and read these ones if there are no conflicts. Yes, sir. Or do we need do we need all commissioners in here for those? I would. All right, so I make a motion that we accept the budget request for the Wilkes Art Gallery and the Wilkes Economic Development Development Corporation. And second, please. I second. Thank you, um, Mr. Parsons. Aye. Miss Day. Aye. Mr. Church. Aye. Mr. Hall. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. <clears throat> Go ahead and have the other. Yeah, get Andrew back, please. <laughs> so, uh, I'll need a motion then to uh, approve the remaining items, remaining agencies. Uh, actually, Mr. Mayor, we'll make a motion to accept the uh, budget request for Wilson Community College. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the, all those in favor, Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Mr. Day? Yes. Mr. Kirk? Yes. Motion carries. Thank Someone else would like to make the last one. No, you're not good. I think Bert is on the Wilkes Development Day School. Yes, and we did ADAP. Oh, I thought so. Yeah, he left. He left for it. I know that he did. We did ADAP, is what he left for. So now he needs to do one more Wilkes Development Day School and he can vote on ADAP. Well, we had a majority on ADAP anyway. 
Yeah. All right, I make a motion that we accept the budget request and approval for Wilkes Developmental State. Second. Second, please. Second. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Yes. Mr. Parsons. Yes. Ms. Day. Yes. And Mr. Church. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. <clears throat> Bert, just a second. <laughs> uh, bring Bert back for the remaining. Is that correct? <laughs> okay, now I think I've got it right. Uh, I need a motion to accept the remaining nonprofit requests for the remaining agencies. All right, uh, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept the budget. Uh, requests for uh, Wilkes County Library, Yakin River, Greenway, Wilkes Rescue Squad, Wilkes County Crime Stoppers, Wilkes Playmakers, Safe Spot Child Advocacy Center, sorry about that guys, and Wilkes Literacy. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Can I have a second, please? I second. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Day? Yes. Mr. Hall? Uh, Ms. Church? Uh, Thank you. The motion carries. We'll continue with uh, consideration of old business, the Smoot Park Master Plan. Mrs. Desch, please. Sure. Let me uh, share this on the screen real quick. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yep. Okay. Let me get it. Okay. 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 Uh, a few months ago, if you remember, we were awarded a grant from the Wilkes uh, Medical Center Foundation to do a master plan on Smith Park. Part of that was to take that plan and apply for their grant application that was due May 17th. So staff has worked very hard on this and I wanted to bring it before you as uh, Mary Elizabeth has contributed a good amount of her time as our NC fellow and wanted to get this in front of you so we could start the discussions, uh, answer any questions, and then eventually bring this for a public hearing and adoption. This will help us not only have a vision for Smoot Park in our future, but we will also have this as a document to apply for more grants. This gives us a feather in our cap for RDF, AFP, all those different state agency grants. And like I mentioned, it gives us a plan for how we're going to do the improvements of the park, uh, you know, fiscally over several courses of the year, several years here, which uh, some of these some of are big improvements. Uh, I've got an elf in your office tonight. Um, I won't go through it page by page, but wanted to get in front of you and um, give Mary Elizabeth an opportunity also to present anything that she had in mind for it. But we've got a lot of people to thank. Um, I'll just run through like a part of it really quickly. Uh, under the table of contents, we've got a good amount of everything from demographics to our site plans to our survey results. It, it's, it's very long, but it's got a lot of really good resources and data that we're going to need. And it's in one document. And let me get that first. The one thing I do want to bring to your attention is the phasing plan. Uh, Mary Elizabeth worked on these site plans to show, you know, current conditions. Our phase one, you know, we've got the addition of the inclusive playground with grant funding. Uh, let's see, she's got listed out here too about relocating the volleyball court, painting the picnic shelters. So we've got a few different projects in mind for each phase. Uh, we have re, uh, we did change a few things with the open field, open space, multi-use. 
uh, field in the back where the basketball courts are, reserving two based on our conversations with staff and felt for right now, we'll just keep two basketball courts and then maybe do like a soccer footer and we'll take these back there because two of the courts are in pretty bad shape. So, uh, phase three, we started looking at improving the river access. That's also part of the river district plan. We want to make sure that our current river access at Sweet Park is adequate and it's going to be, you know, we're going to have more people using it, so we need to make improvements so those people can access the river safely and get to it. Uh, the last thing is in the final phase, you know, that's, that's everything. Like parking, landscaping, finishing touches. So multi-year phase in here, but this gives us a direction for our park. Do you have anything you would like to ask? Yeah, and I'll speak clearly. Um, all of these things outlined have been informed from feedback from the community, feedback from y'all, and the planning documents um, and ideas brought forth from Withers Ravenel, the consultant. And what's really important to stress about this plan is that even though we have it broken down into phases, nothing is set in stone this is more of a document to assist us with prioritizing in what order to do things um what it may look like for example um like the skate park skate park might be expanded in a different direction or we might add a different amenity because no one can really predict 20 years out. And that's why we want to um, pare this down into phases because it is a transformational generational project and we want to break it down into chunks that we can actually get it done. In. Any questions? Okay. For I'm sorry, were you ladies finished? Oh, yes, I'll say, do you have any questions? We'll bring this back. I'll bring this back with Nelson to you all to do a public hearing, get public input, and adopt it at a later date. But I wanted to show you the progress we've made with the grants and where we're at right now with Street Park. Great. Okay. Thank you, ladies. If there's nothing else, move, we'll move to a traffic calming policy briefing. And that, I believe, is Ms. Campbell. Okay, share it. Um, sure. Sure. Our favorite topic. Okay. This is another multi, multiple staff members, multiple departments, and Mary Elizabeth has spearheaded this and spent a lot of her time and resources. I wanted to show you what we have put together. All right. So essentially the final outcome of the work I've done on track plumbing is um, to come up with the set of policy recommendations and guidelines in order to improve the efficiency at which staff respond to catalog and prioritize traffic calming requests because um, it's not sustainable for us to jump immediately at every request, but we also want to be responsive to the public. So um, in this policy, I set forth, um, actually, if you want to go to the flow chart. Um, kind of this flow process of someone submits a traffic calming request, either through a hard copy um, form or online, and this is what a lot of municipalities have. Um, and if those streets are eligible for review, so if they're town maintained, a staff member can let them know that, all right, this is like something the town could potentially do something about, or this is NCDOT maintained, we don't have any authority over it. And that's a very, that's like a five second email that won't take up a lot of staff time. And so essentially then we have these criteria that projects must meet in order to qualify for a 
actual traffic calming study. So um, we have these prior prioritization criteria, and we have two options on the tables. And essentially, a project needs to score a certain number of points in order to be considered eligible for traffic calming. Um, and things like that are like if it's near daycare uh, or if there's a lot of speeding going on. And most of these criteria are things that um, we don't need to go out to the field to figure out. Like just looking at this, most of these things I could figure out from GIS. This is maybe stuff that the planner could do. I don't think it's gonna take up a lot of staff time. And that's, that's really the, the goal of this is that we improve the efficiency with which we can catalog and respond to traffic calming, but also make sure that the public feels hurt. Um, and so in your packet, I have two different examples of the scoring criteria. There's option one and option two. And A and B show examples of scoring um, Mass Street and Sixth Street according to um, both of those types of tables. And this doesn't need to be adopted or action set forth on this. It's um, more of a set of guidelines and me wrapping up my traffic calming project. Yeah, so this is. Like I mentioned, this gives staff guidance on how to rank and score these criteria versus out there all trying to make heads or tails of well, is there speeding? Is this happening? So it gives us a very clear path of how to address issues based on uh, essentially she's pulled different from different municipalities from the National Highway Administration. <laughs> um, so a lot of data was pulled and put into this so we would actually have a a very strict format to follow that is also transparent to the public for how we're scoring, determining if there is a traffic issue on these roads. And they're only on town maintained roads, too. But we would like to hear if you guys had any comments, feedback. If you liked one thing, hated one thing, you tell us. I have gotten some feedback still on the larger speed bump coming down 6th Street. Right. Um, at one point, there was a rug halfway over it. I think somebody thought they might put their car if they put a rug on underneath it. It was gone later on. <laughs> but the scrape was there. There's still scrapes there. And so um, I've had different people mention it. I think maybe just to have looked at that largest one one more time, is it the size it needs to be? Is that the top one? Mm -hmm. Okay, this. They did a cruise to go out and grind it down. Didn't know if that was adequate. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Mr. I've heard the same thing. And then I, so I drove them all again. That top one is, is, is higher than the other two. And then they did a nice job when they milled the head, but it, it could stand a little, another treatment. Yeah, a little more. Okay. Well, that's something we can look into. Did you guys have Great. any the policy? This is kind of, I think of the policy as kind of phase one of addressing traffic calming. And so phase two is what you're talking about. of like, is this the right, do we need a speed bump? Do we need a stop sign? And I can't figure that out. I tried my best to be a traffic engineer. That's just simply not what I am. And that's something that we would either contract out with and that's, that's beyond my scope, I can't tell. But what I can do is help figure out how we respond to requests of I need traffic calming or this is a problem here. And so the policy is looking at addressing the locations. Well, I think this system has the ability to create an equitable uh, evaluation for the bridge streets. So, I mean, I, I'm sure it needs a little fine tuning and that is something that can be addressed within the next reasonable short period of time. So um, uh, I would like to take a, just a quick personal note here and 
tell you what uh, a, a great assistance you have been to North Wilkesboro and the time and effort that you have taken and put into tasks that may not have been uh, as uh, greatly admired as they should have been, but um, your energies and your uh, insight and um, just shows me that uh, I believe your uh, career, successful career is just about to start. So from this chair, I thank you for all that you've done this last year and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd also like to echo Mr. Parsons. I think you did an outstanding job. And we've just been very professional. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to chime in too, please, just because uh, Ms. Campbell's office is just right down the hall from mine. I got to see her often. Uh, she was always in there working. She was one of the first ones to come, one of the last to leave. She has a great work ethic. Her quality of work, in my opinion, has been exemplary. I'll miss her, and I thoroughly enjoyed her company. So thanks once again for me. Thank you. I'll be here on the 30th, too. So you'll see. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. We'll get to do this again. <laughs> we heard you might not be here on the 30th. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I didn't want to be tired of us. <laughs> I'll be here. I'll be here. All right, good. good. Okay. okay. So, if, if anything else, any further questions on traffic calm? Mr. Hall? Oh, 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 oh. This has nothing to do with Mary Elizabeth. She's, she's done a fantastic job. Okay. But all I'm getting is negative comments from people about all this speed bump stuff. And I've had people tell me, well, I'm not coming back into town anymore. That's the mess they're going to put up. And I'm going, well, I, uh, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the solution is. But you've got a lot of people who are aggravated about that. And you've got to think twice before we add any more because we don't want people thinking we don't want them downtown. We need them downtown. We need to encourage them. And I'm not sure how much these speed bumps are encouraging people. I know I'm taking a different route now. I won't go up to six three. Martha, personally, I agree with you 100. But I'm not fussing at her at all. No, no, I mean, no, no. We understand. That. But you all need to take into consideration that a lot of people hate those darn speed bumps, and they are not well. coming in town. Well. Now, what the solution is? I told you what the solution is. Dig up the asphalt, the cobblestone underneath. The <laughs> hill stop. They got the Savannah. I mean, you know. Oh. Um, but that stops that stop sign at the top of Sixth Street Hill. I it cuss it every time I come yeah. to it. Well, you know, Bert and I was in Raleigh Wednesday, and the speed bumps are all over that town. They're everywhere. You think well, Raleigh's high? Yeah, but I know it's probably a different situation. I know. But we definitely need to to take yeah. that top speed bump yeah, down. Too bad. Too bad. The rest of them, y'all, if you if you fly past them, you're going too fast. So, see, the new term now is is traffic calming. Last year it was low hanging fruit. I don't know what it'll be next year. <laughs> but we got to think here, folks. Excuse me, I shouldn't interrupt. But no, you're, you're those fine. Speed bumps are you're fine. You're fine. And, you know, addressing the biggest speed bump, I think will make a lot of people happy. I've got one comment. So the two issues that we've had to deal with are the volume of traffic and the speeding. And one thing that I think our board needs to discuss and maybe have an opinion on uh, is that they talked about the bypass from 268 to 421. I think we need to all speak and have a decision on that. If it's something we wanted to support, I think we should do a resolution and take it to NCDOT because I feel like well, there are some it needs to be discussed and it can be negative. I feel like that could address a lot of the volume that we have. And it's already in the DOT. It's in the DOT budget. It's, it's in the queue, but it's not funded yet. And I think that we passed a resolution saying we supported it. I think it might be beneficial. I'm just going to toss it out there because I think more than all these other things we're doing, something like that might actually address the study. Or what, what the studies we've done are supposed to do, I guess. What are we going to do when we get all that at block 46? What are we going to do when the speedway comes back and we have all those venues? 
We need people here in town spending money. Well, and my fear is what's going to happen is will people just gravitate right around North Wilkesboro, whereas now they are on our main street and they're on our streets and they're shopping and walking on the streets. And will that bypass take take a lot of business and a lot of feet on the sidewalk? It then we will we'll, we'll bypass will take all the traffic from downtown. If we could take the trucks from downtown, I'd be happy. That's the biggest problem we got. We had a truck on the street this morning, driver slipped in last night. The police asked us to leave. I think our town needs to be focused on things that will bring people downtown. And I don't I don't agree that the bypass would necessarily take people, people from downtown. I understand the concern, but that's just my Mark somebody okay. to go sit up on Joe Woody's desk and tell them to fix this stupid intersection down here at Domino's. Take that curb off that parking lot so the trucks can make, make that, that turn, turn in and out and make the mail truck go down and use the loop and come up C Street instead of coming down Main. It's not rocket science. That intersection, that parking lot juts out too far. And I talked to Mick about it some months ago and he went, huh? And I said, yeah, I'm sorry, but they need to take the corner of your parking lot off so the trucks can come in and out of that intersection. It's a dumb intersection. Okay. All right, just, just do this. I, I don't want to get into that huge can of worms again, but uh, Martha, I've heard you've been through this before. We've spoke about this before. And uh, Ms. Dutch, if you would please make a note, we'll get it on the agenda and pursue this further. Uh, I do know this, I live, well, you know, I live in those condos over there. I'm on 6th Street probably more than anyone. And um, it, you know, we, we caught a lot of grief when we didn't have them. Now we're catching grief because we do have them. And we also know that uh, some people, you, you're not going to keep them happy no matter what. However, uh, those speed bumps are substantial. I drive a pickup. I can be in the, you know, the low 20s. And please, if you can remember, take your foot off the brake and your hand off the wheel just for a moment when you hit the bump. It, may, it does make a big difference no matter what you're driving. I believe the top one is a candidate for milling again, possibly the medium one. <clears throat> the bottom one is, is tolerable. That's just my opinion. But even though you mill them down again, there's still going to be that same group of people who are going to raise cane about it. So that's we're going to have to live with the uh, discomfort of having the bumps or the discomfort of the people, other group of uh, being so upset about the speed and the amount of traffic. You're never going to get it finished, but I think I don't like them, but I think that we don't have the police force uh, and the money uh, to have them out there patrolling 24-7, uh, which would keep some people happy, but it, it would wreck the budget. So if everyone's okay with this, including Mrs. Nichols, uh, we'll, we'll end it here if we can, unless someone has something else that is burning to say, and uh, we'll put this on an agenda for a following meeting. Is everyone okay with that? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Because I do agree that that intersection does need some work, but it's going to be expensive. So we'll have to, you know, so my game promises we can't. We need to move to uh, urgent issues. And I believe this do fencing at the park, maybe, or maybe not. Uh, you broke up. You said emerging issues. Discuss that. <laughs> emerging issues. Where is that over at? Yeah. I've got it. I have a couple things. Okay, Mark, we broke up a little bit. Are we at emerging issues now? I did. Can you try to turn your video? I'm sorry. I can't hear or not. Yeah, if no one has anything else, we'll go on. Palmer had something. I do. Um, sorry, guys. Two things. Go one ahead. is uh, here, they put the new fence up at the tennis courts to separate it from the new basketball courts. And there's a few small things wrong with the pre existing fence here or there. Um, do you have any of those pictures? I have, took some pictures to show y'all, but while we have them down there doing that, I think we ought to fix that and see if staff can go fix it. It's just little things. Like you see how the poles through the fence and not in the hole. 
I mean, I almost think I could fix it. But um, just while we're on that project, let's go ahead and get that right. I think. Oh yeah. My, my suggestion would be there's probably four or five little things like that. My suggestion would be to see if staff could do it first <coughs> to, to minimize our costs, and if not, maybe have the contractor look at it. Look at it, but the number that he gave us was. $3,300, which I think is too much for something this small. Yeah. $375, $375. Yeah. Just a little thing. Well, we're going to pass out a quick report for everybody. Okay. With the fences. You know. <laughs> He said that would repair everything. Do you think it needs to be repaired? No. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it looked better, but it's also probably functional to be more structurally sound. But I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention while they're down there working on it. So so, I mean, could we, if we decided, if we decided to, because uh, we already up the project the last time we met, because I think we decided to put the 10 foot separated fence. Right. And so that kicked, that kicked the cost of this project out. And I think we have to make some budget, we're going to have to make the budget adjustments from the contingency. Is that what I remember? Some of it, some of it we took uh, since the project's not going to be. Finished or completed before June 30. One of the budget amendments is moving that entire project out of Nelson's budget, Parks and Rec, into its own, into the uh, Recreation and Improvements Capital Project Ordinance. So that way, um, I think we're already moving 100,000 for uh, the match to the Forest Grant. Mm -hmm. And we, so we're moving this entire budget there. So it'd be about 155,000. Knowing that won't be enough, but I don't think we'll use the 55,000 before July 1. So we'll come back after July 1 and do a budget amendment if we need to move more money into that project to, to do everything we need to do there. So if we stuck, Nelson, are you confident that 3,750 would address all of the concerns that uh, Andrew has and took pictures of? Yes. Would David, could staff, could you justify the staffs uh, uh, doing that in house? You know, is it a trade off? You know, because it would take about $3,750 worth of staff time that they could be doing their normal tasks. But what I'm saying is, is it more cost effective to let a professional fix company fix it or have us fix it, our guys fix it? We can go take a look at it and we can fix what we can, maybe. Uh, you know, we're not chancers by no means. Uh, some of the stuff we still may have to get them to do, like putting a bowl back in the hole and stuff like that, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but we can take a look at it and, and see. I mean, my thing is, is, we're already spending 40 grand plus, almost 50 grand plus to, to do what we're doing. It's just one of those things where I'm not a big won't spend money, but in the grand scheme of things, thirty-seven fifty is is it, is it just consider spending it to get it done right? And they're yes. there, they've got the tools to do it with. I mean, when you look at it, it looks. I thought to myself, hey, I can bring my ladder and fix this. But you may get your ladder down there and find out, oh, this is separated because the ground is settled and these poles are further apart. Right. So and they do this every day. Yeah. Every day. yeah. I mean, uh, from the other end of the day, is what do you guys say? Well, this guy here is doing the fence. Bert knows him personally. Yeah, I do. Let us go talk to him. <laughs> Let me and Bert go talk to him. See if we can get him to do it cheaper and more efficient. That, 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 to me, that's a pretty good point of change. Just fix the fence and resurface two tennis courts. It is. It is a lot of money, but I agree that, you know, if you're going to do it, let's do it right. And not yes, have to agree, agree. Agree. Cosmetics do mean a lot. And the, the, pictures, the pictures look pretty bad. So uh, let's tell you what we could do is uh, 
Bert, if uh, if you and Otis uh, know that gentleman can have a word, and maybe uh, if uh, David Webb and uh, Mr. Palmer, we get together and look at the pictures, and maybe even take a ride down there next week, and uh, let's go ahead and do it right because the optics are bad with just a few little pictures. It, it is. It needs to be done and done right. So, Maris, could we just go ahead and, and, and say that we're going to, because again, I think we would have to make some kind of motion about this, correct, Connie? Well, we've, we've got money to do the actual project already there, and I don't think we'll use it before June 30. So, I think after July 1, once we get everything done and know exactly how much it's going to cost, we'll just do a budget amendment to increase the budget. All right. So, can, but on the June 30th meeting, can we have a decision that? We know exactly whether we're going to spend this money. Where uh, gentleman down here at this end, we're able to negotiate a better deal for the town. You know, just something so we can have some kind of finalization as to what we are actually doing by June 30th. Yes. Yeah, why not? It's good on you. When they get there and start their doing their work, we'll know then. Yeah, the project's going to be in its own project. Uh, the budget's going to move out of the current year budget into its own project. So June 30 won't apply for this project any longer. I know, but but, but still, nice we want to know. Doing, still we want to know. We have to it could be in the middle of July before we get a final figure. And I thought Maybe we already more. had a final figure for what they were doing. This would be just in addition to. There is an agreement already. I think the additional basketball court was around 12,000 more than what the original agreement was. But then this would be 3,700 more on top of that. Unless you get it. Well, there is in our minutes in your packet, May 26, item X was the original budget and the amendment. If you want to look at those numbers. It looks like the final cost is going to be $68, and that included that 10 foot fence. That includes the 10 foot. Yes. Yeah. yes. So that's, the, that's the price tag we're at right now. Is it $58,000? $668. And that's the cost of that. We added an extra backing off of it. And then for yeah, we'll bring it back to the on the thirtieth if that works. Mr. Mayor, can I move on now? Yes, please do. Sorry, I was making notes. So this may kind of be, Robbie, I might need your input, but um, I know that we don't do the schools. I know it's a county thing, but with the recent situation with the school shooting in Texas, I think that we need to look at what we can do to strengthen the safety of the schools in our district, C.C. Wright. North Wilkesboro. I don't know if there's companies that can come in and do a study, evaluate. I don't know if that's something the police department could do. It always seems like this, you think to yourself, you see someone like that on TV, it couldn't happen here, but I'm here to tell you it can happen anywhere. And I think if there's anything we could do to help keep the kids safe at those schools, I think that we're obligated to do it. And I don't even know what that means. I just wanted to start a discussion. Um, I think that it would seem to me there's things that could be done that might fortify those schools, so to speak. Robbie, do you have any thoughts on that? That's kind of, I kind of think about it. But. As far as the actual schools, like I've seen, I'm just going off, I'm not an expert. I'm just going off what I've seen on TV, but people talk about, you know, stronger doors, different things like that. I mean, have they done stuff like that for our schools here already? We, we have plans in place. I'm, I'm not going to discuss them in the open public meeting. Well, I uh, I support us having a discussion and looking into that because if something happens and there's things we could have done we did do. I'm not directing this to you. I'm talking about this actual facility. I feel like that people in office have a, they have a, they they have, they have a responsibility to, to look into that now, and that's my statement. I agree.
Anything else, Mr. Farmer? Uh, yeah, I guess I just to finalize that. I'm uh, I'm saying, is there anything we can do that might prevent someone that has bad intentions from getting in there in the first place? That's the kind of thing I think we should be looking into, and that's it. I appreciate your time. Access, accessibility, right? Well put. Anyone else have anything on uh, emerging issues? <clears throat> okay, hearing nothing, um, we will have a closed session uh, tonight. And uh, Mr. Parsons, I'll need a motion, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion that we go into closed session to conduct I close session according to GS 143-318.11, subsection A, subsection 6, to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment of an individual public officer. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. May I have a second, please? I second. Thank you. Mr. Palmer, or Mr. Palmer please. Yeah. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Mr. Stay? Yes. Mr. Hall? Uh, Mr. Church? Uh, I think, okay, we're now in a uh, closed session. Uh, do you all need a five minute break? Or do you uh, want to continue? Yeah, I'd like five minutes. Yeah, so we need five minutes to clear the room. Yep, okay, so about uh, roughly uh, four, six thirty at a time. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh,